the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I'd like to invite each one of you to our celebration of this most holy Eucharist here at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. Today is Wednesday of the second week of Easter. And we'll hear that incredible witness of the Apostles Paul, St. Peter, and St. John, giving witness to Christ's resurrection. Let's take this moment and place our hearts before our Heavenly Father. Let us ask him to be merciful to us for the times that we have sinned. As we acknowledge our sins, let us say, I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison, so they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, 
because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come forward to light, toward light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First, we will reflect briefly on on God's word from the Acts of the Apostles. As you know, immediately after the resurrection, the uh, the apostles, especially Peter and John, begin to do extraordinary things. It started off with 
healing of a crippled man as they were going to the temple for the nine o'clock morning prayer. And they saw this crippled man and they looked into his face. He was expecting some some form of monetary gifts, but he says to Peter and John says, we don't have that, but what we have is what we wish to share with you. In the name of Jesus, the Nazarene, walk. And the crippled man got up and walked. It stirred up all kinds of emotions, not only in the man who was healed, because he became extremely excited, happy, and grateful. He just clung on to Peter and John, he was with them. But then other people saw him, and he was right in front of the Jerusalem temple, in the temple area, and so became attracted to that. And so Peter gave witness about this Jesus who was rejected, who died, but also rose from the dead, and that in his, in his name and through his power, extraordinary things happen. And so they gave witness to that. Because of what they did, they were arrested for commotion, you know, arrested by the high priests and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin. They were put into jail. But then the angel frees them from jail. They were supposed to have a hearing the next morning, but they are not there. They're not in jail. They found them that they're again preaching in front of the Jerusalem temple, doing extraordinary things. And then the Sadducees, the high priests, they arrest them again. And as you'll hear in the future, they say, why are you doing this? Why are you preaching in the name of this Nazarene, you want to accuse us that we were the ones who condemned him to death. They were very angry with, with the apostles. They also say, why are you preaching the name in his name that uh, there's a, he's the one who's risen and resurrected from the dead? And of course, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, so they felt that he said the apostles were teaching and teaching everything that they did not and they were performing these extraordinary signs. But from that moment on, as we know, the Lord who gave them the power, received the Holy Spirit, received the power not only to forgive sins, but to also to do extraordinary things in his name, the apostles began to manifest the, the power of Jesus in them, the power of Jesus which is also in us. You know, every bishop is able to remove, expel, expel demons from, from people who are afflicted by that. The power is still with us, the power to make the bread and wine into body and blood of Christ, the power to forgive sins. So the power that the Lord gave us and trusted to us is still active, is still here with us. It is God's love that is manifested in Jesus. God's love so great as we read in the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may have life, life eternal. There are many, many scriptural quotes which speaks of this incredible love that God has for us. As you remember, John says, you know, uh, you know God is love and whoever loves is of God. God is love. We have not only John 3, 16, but also Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This verse emphasizes the sacrificial nature of Jesus' love as he willingly gave his life for us, for humanity. We say in our, in our uh, creed, he says, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For us and for our salvation, he died. He embraced the cross and rose from the dead. John, in First John's letter, chapter four, we see this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. 
This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Again in John 15, we hear greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. In St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter two, we see we read, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead to transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It is the, this quote, God who is rich in mercy became the very foundation of St. John Paul II's encyclical on mercy. Rich in mercy, this is the quote that, that uh, John Paul wished to initiate his encyclical on God's mercy and love. There's no greater, there's no greater love. Because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ and even when we were dead in transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. Christianity, the whole Judeo-Christian tradition speaks of God as love. And this love that God has for us is absolute. It's, it is unconditional. There is no condition in that love. So this is what we have. First of all, that our belief is founded on God, God's love for us, that is without, without anything, is not based on our actions and our worthiness, but it's unconditional. He loves us. He absolutely loves us. And we can look at ourselves and he says, how is it possible for us that God will love us. We look at ourselves and we see our own weaknesses, our problems, difficulties. And yet it is true that he loves us, loves each one of us, with, that we are precious in his eyes. We're beautiful in his eyes, even despite our brokenness, because he can deal with our brokenness by his mercy, by the gift of merciful love. He can heal, he can restore. But the fact is that he loves us unconditionally. The second, you know, we can speak of why does God love us? Because he made us. We are his children. Just like every parent, no matter what, there's that type of love, especially fatherly love, motherly love, that knows no bounds. And, and that this love is the very foundation of our relationship with God. There's no other, that's the foundation. It's just like there's a, the foundation of love between spouses is love. The foundation between spouses, which makes, the, makes family, family, a family unit is love, caring for each other, looking after the good of one another, protecting from evil, helping to grow, nourish. But there's also another dimension of that love is it's a redeeming love. God wants us to be redeemed because we are broken, we are sinful. And so that love, we speak of that as merciful love. God who stoops down to us, wants to rescue us from the misery of our own making or, or, others, or others making or the, the, the brokenness which is a consequence of the original sin. But it is also love, it's a compassionate and protective love. He wants to not only reach out to us in compassion, but he wants to also protect us from the consequences of our own lack of love, the evil tendencies. He wants us to rescue us so that he may take us home to heaven. And ultimately, all purpose, you know, for this type of love is, is our fulfillment. You know, God made us for love, and this is why we're prone for love, to be loved. And also we long to be loved, accepted. You know, we can speak of other terms of love, acceptance, being uh, understood, being forgiven, being cared for. There's also the other side of that love is that we are to be loving. 
to be loving, to be like God, which means is that as he loved us, so we are to love one another. As he cared for us, we are to care for one another. As he was compassionate and merciful, we are to be compassionate and merciful to one another. That's a sign of that love we have for one another. It is the type of love that is to be also unconditional. We cannot say, yes, because you're kind to me, therefore I'm kind to you. If God's love is unconditional for us, should our love be conditioned? Or should it be, strive, we should strive to love? Because a person is a person, despite the brokenness of that person which we see. And that, that is that, it is that love that heals the, the, the other, that heals. I think that if we were to look at a love, a love also means sharing the good news. Because we want people to also come to know the Father's love, the great love he has for us to share, to remind. Yes, yes, you have wandered off, you have been not faithful, but God is there waiting for you. It's like the encyclical of divine mercy. The prodigal father waiting for the son to come and wishing to restore him to the full dignity. It is also love that invites us to pray for one another. So prayer becomes love. If, if love, actions, works of mercy are not able to, to reach out because we are not able to do so, then prayer, prayer becomes that, that sign of love. Obviously, we are invited always to do active love, because you know, how, how can we express our faith if it's not through love? And this is the, that the invitation of faith manifested and expressed through love. Christians are to, all of us, the followers of Christ, are to love him. Can we love him through the Eucharist? that we celebrate. And it's a type of love for the personal presence, real presence of Jesus. We can love him. When we welcome him into our hearts, that we would cherish him, that we would not forget whom we have received, that we would allow him to touch every cell of our body, of our mind, that we would allow him to heal our memories, wounds of past hurts, that we, we Invite him to heal the brokenness of our own soul, distrust, everything that's there, the uncontrolled passions, anger, frustration, that he may touch with his love, with his presence. Because where the Lord is, there is his healing love, transforming love. So allowing him to be within us. Gratitude is another form of love. Gratitude for God's grace, for his sacramental gifts, sacrament of penance or baptism, confirmation, sacrament of, of matrimony. God gives us the power to become more faithful, but we have to pray, we have to talk upon, I mean, to, we have to invite him, we have to desire to share this life in that communion with him. So what we have before us is God's love, and God's love being manifested in Jesus. The Father's love is manifested in Jesus, his presence, in his teaching, in his guidance. And his invitation is to become followers, to be like him, to be sons and daughters, like, like he is. And with that gift, with that transforming presence, we are being prepared for eternity to live a life of paradise, which is life of love, pure love, total love, complete love. And that means where there's love, there's happiness, because there's no other happiness except through love. So maybe then today, as we continue with the sacred liturgy, let us ask the Lord to help us to become men and women who love, love God, love one another, and enjoy, anticipate, the gifts to come, and that is 
the presence of Jesus when we receive him and living for all eternity in him and with all those who love, who cleanse themselves, purify themselves, sanctify themselves through his blood, through his body, so that we may share his glory that we may be partakers of his divinity and live for all eternity with him. As his faithful children, let us turn to our Heavenly Father and present our petitions to him. That the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ may reign in the hearts of civic and political leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are suffering the loss of a loved one may find comfort in the hope of eternal rest with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith may grow in holiness and a spirit of thanksgiving through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died having lived with Christ may be welcomed into his heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. We'll continue to pray for an end to violence, evil, war, especially for peace in Ukraine, and for just resolution of, of the conflict in Middle East. We also pray for those who in any way have harmed us, hurt us, that Lord may grant them healing, forgiveness, We also pray for those we have hurt ourselves, that God's love may may heal also that areas of wounds. We, We pray for young people that they may not be led astray by ideologies of today, but they may come to know the love that God has for them and the future glory awaiting them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, You are the God of love and mercy. Hear these prayers and answer them in your great love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
hearing, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son O Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. To this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. <clears throat> As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, St. Faustina, and with all the saints, on most constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, your order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory where you wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. So offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through death gave life to the world, free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all of our sins and from every evil, who is always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed. of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Diary number 328 from the Diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska. O purest love, rule in all your plenitude in my heart and help me to do your holy will most faithfully. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Just before I bestow blessing upon you, a couple of announcements. As you know, not only this Mass, but also Mass at 2 o'clock is Mass for pilgrims who come here. The 2 o'clock Mass is preceded by one hour of, of Eucharistic adoration, uh, one thirty Rosary for Life, confession start at 1, and it, the, mass, the 2 o'clock Mass is followed by the 3 o'clock hour of great mercy. Uh, as you know, we had a beautiful weekend here, a Divine Mercy Sunday weekend. Saturday was cooler. Sunday wasn't exactly too warm, but, but I have to say the uh, being there, hearing confessions, you know, the whole weekend, you know, we had over 2,000 confessions. So it was a beautiful gift. But it's not just that. It's the life and that, that witness of all of you who come here, the witness, beautiful witness of faith. It was a feast of mercy, truly a feast of God who wishes to bestow a upon us everything and and so watching so many who come and all of you who possibly watched us through EWTN transmission is as we share that joy of knowing that the one who has loved us from the beginning is the one who will take us home one day and that will be our fulfillment and our joy and that's what we we're here for because we know what he promises and we know that his promises are true that for those who have received the Eucharist in a state of grace, receive fullness of forgiveness of sins and all the consequences, punishments due to sin. That is the beautiful gift. And I know that for anyone who has not received it on Divine Mercy Sunday, but each day we have the opportunity to have plenty of indulgence, receive the Eucharist, pray for the intentions of the Holy Father to do some act of work. And, and go, so we can, we can do this, you know, we can receive these special graces that God wishes to bestow upon us. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke when we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
Hi, I'm Father Chris Aylor of the Marian Fathers, and I want to tell you about a grace I hope you don't let pass by. As a member of the Association of Marian Helpers, you can receive all the graces of our masses and prayers and penances just like you were a Marian priest or brother by decree of the Holy See. It doesn't cost anything, and it takes but a few seconds to sign up. Please visit micprayers.org or call us at 800 462 